Good morning. Um, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Giovanni Gerdovic. I work in the performance team at SUSE under uh, Yusuf Kaukab. Topic of this presentation, preemption in uh, Linux, kernel preemption. Um, I encourage you to uh, raise your hand, make a sign if you want to make any comment, um, interact with the material. This is, um, uh, those are things that I am, uh, that I'm learning. I will uh, surely make uh, some mistakes. Uh, I will, uh, there are things I'm not sure about and I will, uh, and I will tell uh, where they are. So if you, um, if you know, uh, just take the mic and that would be uh, very beneficial for me and I hope you will enjoy the next uh, 40 minutes. All right. This is uh, the overview of the entire presentation. So bottom line up first, what we're talking about, kernel preemption. Um, we have four uh, kind of kernel preemption in Linux. Well, the first one is none, so no kernel preemption um, in kernel, but uh, user mode code can be preempted. Uh, then we have a mode called uh, voluntary, and uh, this is what we use in the desktop uh, product in Leap. Uh, the previous one, no kernel preemption, is what is used uh, in Slash by default. And the way voluntary work is um, there are uh, those uh, might sleep uh, annotation here and there in the kernel that says th that say this function can sleep, and so those are converted uh, into scheduling point. Um, then uh, there is a third, the flavor number three, that is full, uh, the kernel is fully preemptible unless uh, 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 it is holding a spin lock. And then we have a different beast, which is um, a, an out of three uh, patch, um, PrimeTRT. We, uh, we have a product based on PrimeTRT, and this is the most of it sophisticated of the, of the three, the most advanced. Um, I would uh, list uh, its defining feature with, um, with this three item, uh, most of the spin locks are replaced by uh, mutexes, so they can sleep. Um, those uh, uh, mutexes uh, implement an algorithm uh, for priority inheritance to avoid the problem of priority inversion. And it has a threaded IRQs. Uh, so this is essentially the content of the presentation um, from start to finish, but I would like to start um, a little uh, back for those who don't have uh, a lot of familiarity with the internal of uh, Linux. So um, uh, how does the operating system schedule? Uh, it calls a function that is called schedule. So this is very ex explicit in the code. Um, if you are uh, used to uh, user mode, uh, user space application, um, you see your code and you don't have any indication that um, the CPU may be taken by other, uh, by other processes. This is abstract, but in the kernel, this is very uh, apparent, and uh, you call this function. If you don't call this function, you have the CPU. Um, so this is an example. Something happens uh, before uh, this function is called, then we uh, call schedule, and we're out of the way. Uh, schedule will uh, call um, pick next task from, uh, from uh, the scheduler framework and the, which will uh, trigger eventually a context switch and uh, something else is gonna take the CPU. So um, it's very explicit and if you see the code, you can grab for schedule and you know where uh, uh, we schedule. Um, the concept of scheduling latency is central in uh, this discussion about preemption because preemption is all about reducing scheduling latency. Uh, what is scheduling latency? So um, I took this diagram from the website of, Bre of Brendan Gregg, and you can see the URL here on the bottom. Um, so the, uh, this represents the, uh, the states uh, of a thread. I'm not sure about this guy over here swapping, so if you can please ignore it. Um, but um, we have 
uh, in the in the red dot, in the red uh, circles, uh, we are on the CPU. So we are running code on the CPUs. Uh, the blue circles are uh, states of the CPUs. So the, the the task is not running, and um, is somewhere else. Uh, it's not running uh, code. So we are on the CPU. We can be in kernel mode, user mode. All right. Our task could be. Um, Requesting in some I.O., some network, uh, waiting for stuff, whatever. Um, but what we're interested in is this state here. The, the, uh, our task is ready to run, but it's not here. It's not on the, on the CPU yet. Right? So uh, scheduling latency is the time since we enter the state and we exit. Enter the state means being uh, put into a RAM queue. Uh, but the, the, the time that um, between uh, being ready to run and running is uh, uh, something that a latency critical application uh, do not tolerate if it is too high for their specification. Um, as you can see, uh, you can enter this um, state from two arrows, right? From the bottom, which corresponds, to, for example, I am wait, uh, what is this? Waking up from uh, data is ready from the disk. Uh, some network data is ready. I got my lock and I can enter cri the critical section. Or uh, I wake up from idle. Um, so um, we could uh, classify those um, uh, those situations from the uh, arrow on the top on the bottom as I'm entering. Um, 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 those are situations since where I relinquished the CPUs voluntarily. Voluntarily, there was something that I wanted to do, uh, for example, reading data, etc., and uh, I gave up my CPU. Uh, the task gave up the CPU in order to make progress. But uh, in this other arrow, which is uh, the arrow that we will concern uh, with uh, today, this is uh, preemption. And um, this is the process they wanted to run. Please, please, please leave me on the CPU, but uh, something uh, with a higher priority uh, deserves the CPU more, right? So uh, here we are taken off the CPUs. If we project uh, emotions on this task uh, involuntarily, and uh, here the task says, I need to get off the CPU because I have other things to do. So this being voluntary or involuntary, I, I believe it translates into this uh, um, sort of uh, uh, re, uh, analogy. Um, I, I would also like to go through the, the scheduling classes because um, there are a lot of names. There is real time here. Also, there is um, um, those are uh, real time policies. Also, this. Uh, um, this uh, uh, scheduling class deadline also has to do with real time, but we, uh, today we, con we concern ourselves with the preempt RT patches, how, those, how uh, these things relate to each other. So the hierarchy that we are looking at is um, concern the uh, quality of the priority of a task, how urgent it is that a task uh, uh, run. run. Um, we have, uh, um, um, I have ignored two classes, but they are not very interesting, the, the stop class and the idle class, but uh, those three are where our um, user mode task uh, or uh, kernel thread will be in. And the most, uh, the, the one that, is, that has the, the higher priority is uh, this earliest deadline first, um, and it's a, um, it is a, essentially, a, a, um, I want to say, a real-time uh, policy, but whatever. It is, it is the one with the highest uh, priority. Then we have this other real-time thing, which is uh, not as sophisticated as a uh, SCAD deadline. Um, and then uh, we have CFS. So I wanted to emphasize that there is, a, there is an order, right? Higher priority. Can you see my, uh, my pointer, by the way? Yeah. All right, because I'm sort of using it to point at things. So this is higher priority, less priority, and then the least, um, 
the one with least, pri uh, least priority. Within the class itself, um, uh, the, the tasks that populate, uh, the tasks that belong to, ri to real time, they also have their own priority, right? From zero to 99. Same story for, um, for CFS. Um, the, um, the nice values uh, map to a um, notion of priority. And uh, I should have probably noted in the in EDF, there is also, um, in EDF you do a quantum um, and a period, which is uh, um, quantum would be how the share of the, uh, how, uh, which portion of the period you need to run, uh, uh, you need to be guaranteed to be on the CPU. Um, to, to make progress. So uh, the schedule to keep track of those things and know which process uh, needs uh, more urgently the CPU. So this is all about priority. Um, and preemption, uh, how do we uh, link those two concepts? Uh, I would, um, kernel preemption is a mech of this kernel preemption is uh, um, uh, the giving more opportunity uh, for context switches. So more opportunity for uh, to take stuff off the CPU to make room for uh, urgent uh, work. So kernel preemption, we make more opportunity for context switches, and uh, so I would say that preemption, how do we connect those two things? Preemption is a mechanism to honor priorities. Uh, so, to, um, so those are uh, con concepts that clearly have a relationship, but uh, uh, the real time you read in preempt RT um, is a different thing than the real time that you see, for example, here. This is... Uh, same name, but um, different meaning. Uh, so uh, I will begin now describing in a little bit more detail uh, each of those uh, four, um, uh, four flavors. So uh, we begin with uh, no kernel preemption. And um, right? there is, uh, the, the, ta the task cannot be preempted while in, uh, while in kernel mode, but uh, uh, it can be preempted in user mode. This, um, um, for me, when I first learned about kernel preemption and I learned that there is a mode where you don't have uh, preemption, I was thinking, wait a second, isn't this, uh, are we doing preemptive multitasking as I study at school? But um, uh, that's a different thing. Preemptive multitasking concerns with uh, user mode uh, execution. Um, so, of course, we are uh, taking a task off the CPUs. Um, this is uh, the uh, traditional uh, uh, preemption model that Linux has since the very beginning. So, where is schedule called? This is a question that we want to ask ourselves. We know that uh, in order to schedule, we want to call schedule. So, let's find out where schedule is invoked in this mode. In two situations, coming back from a syscall and coming back from an uh, from internet interrupt handler. And uh, yeah, I was mentioning preemptive multitasking. Um, all right, um, second, uh, um, uh, the second uh, uh, flavor that I'll discuss is uh, the complete opposite, at least from the uh, descriptive name that it has. That was no preemption, now we have all preemption, full preemption. Um, I'm, um, without going uh, through, the, through the voluntary first, and I'm doing this because this is the chronological order they were implemented. Um, oops, sorry. Should have been uh, without the... Uh, uh, you will hear another of this in 15 minutes. I was, uh, I was a, a, a way for, uh, for reminding myself that uh, time is passing. Um, um, we are on track. Um, the, right, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, full kernel kind of preemption was uh, implemented in 2000, um, 2000, the, the early 2000s. Uh, mer uh, first patch in, in, um, in 2000 and then merged uh, mainline 2002. Uh, while uh, no preemption, uh, uh, preemption none was the original Linux 0.01 in 1991 uh, from Linux Torvalds. Um, here I'm listing the config option if you want to compile your kernel uh, with this mode, that's here. But you can also give it um, a, a command line parameter uh, and that uh, it's a recent, um, relatively recent addition. So how does this work? Um, there is this, uh, uh, this flag, uh, TIF, thread information flag, needless get. Um, when it is set, this flag, this flag is a property of a task and it means you need to get out. 
And uh, when it is set, um, and this, uh, um, um, uh, this uh, task is uh, uh, in, in kernel mode not holding SPN lock, that uh, can be preempted. Um, how do we know if the, ta the, the, the flag is set? Easy, we check it. But how do we know if we're not holding SPN lock? There is, this, uh, uh, there is a, um, a, a variable, preempt count, that originally was also per task, then it was uh, made uh, uh, per CPU, but in any case, um, this uh, variable is incremented when we acquire a spin lock and uh, uh, decremented when we release it. So if it's zero, we're not in a critical section protected by a spin lock and uh, we can be preempted. Um, so the, the, again, where the, where the schedule is called in, uh, um, in two additional uh, uh, categories of sites. Uh, one is uh, the, uh, the, the exit of uh, uh, IRC interrupt handler uh, that return to kernel mode, not to user mode. Um, that was already uh, taken care of by preemption none. And in, the sec in this second uh, case where uh, the kernel call calls preempt disable. Um, uh, sorry? That's exactly right. Thank you, Jürgen. Um, so this should be preempt enable. Yeah, when you re enable preempt, uh, uh, preemption. This is exactly the kind of interaction that I'm looking for. So thank you, Jürgen. Uh, but I knew this one, right? That was a typo, right? Uh, also, I'm kind of confused. So, you know, if I have kernel code and there is interrupt, so I have enabled interrupt, so IRQ can uh, happen, but I have preemption disabled, then I don't think we will actually call schedule, yeah? Like... Uh, so you, you, you don't think that this is correct? You don't think that the first site is... Yeah, uh, yeah because it doesn't make sense to me. Like, I can disable preemption with yeah. preempt disable. Yeah. And then interrupt can interrupts can still happen, yeah. That's, that's the whole point why, yeah. why we have like preempt and yeah. and it. But then if like IRQ happens and we return back, yeah, then we are not allowed to schedule, yeah. So, but like you could, no, but the, I believe that there is that there must be. I don't know exactly if uh, it's like the last thing in the. I don't know. This also, I uh, this where this information comes from the from the year 2010 by Robert Love. This is the book uh, uh, by uh, the. Um, Linux kernel development, and I cannot trust it because Robert Love was the maintainer of this one, right? Uh, so he wrote, um, I, like you call it, um, on uh, the task can be preempted uh, upon return from the interrupt handler to uh, to kernel mode. So uh, you say that uh, we can't schedule. You can't. You, no, I think it's, it's just correct. Called? It's just missing RQ handle exit and preemption enabled. Mm -mm. Right. Should we rather Robert Love? <laughs> no, no, thank you very he much. He doesn't care anymore. So. That's right. No, but thank you very much, and this is extremely important. So thank you. We are going uh, in the right direction. Um, uh, taking note of that. I am. Um, then there are uh, all the other places where schedule could be already called. Um, and, that, and then this is, uh, this is something I'm not sure about. Like this is, um, I really like if um, someone can explain this to me. It must be some, a, a basic uh, notion that I'm missing or something that, um, anyway. Why uh, we need to disable preemption upon uh, uh, holding a spin lock and um, this is uh, one of the core tenants of full preemption. Um, I found uh, several reasons uh, on the large and uh, wide internet, um, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say what I found. Right, first thing I found is that um, um, the, the, this description: we are avoiding the trouble of having pre uh, preemption on inter uh, on uh, spin locks because we kind of piggyback on the work that was done for SMP symmetric multi -pro uh, processing. And we say, all right, uh, if we are not holding a spin lock, it means that we are not afraid of other CPU touching our uh, uh, critical uh, region data. That, and so if we are SMP safe, we're going to be preemption safe. So this is something that it gets repeated a lot online, which makes sense. But it doesn't justify 
like it says that this is safe, like it says that um, if you disable preemption in the spin lock, you have, you are uh, uh, preemption safe, but it doesn't say what would happen if you enable preemption in the spin lock. So this is something that definitely true, you can, this works, but what if? That the what if is not very much an, um, answered. Um, one thing that I am convinced when I read it, I say, okay, that makes sense. Uh, by the way, the, the consensus of all the people I ask is that this is a deadlock. Like, uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, a, um, certain that you do it, boom, deadlock, or there is a, a, a possibility of having a deadlock. So this, the, the answer is deadlock, which one? Um, back to what I was trying to describe, is there is a situation that I can see happening. I am at a, a task. I, I go, uh, I want to uh, cross a critical section. I, I grab my spin lock. I enter my critical section. And now we try to think what would go wrong if I was preempted. I enter the, the critical section. I have the lock in my pocket. And I'm preempted. I'm out. So I go to sleep, essentially. Um, then other tasks may want to also cross the critical section. They try to acquire the spin lock. They see that I have it, so they start spinning. So they're spinning, waiting to enter a critical section, but I am not even there. I'm just sleeping. So this argument says it is a waste of resources because uh, the developer put a spin lock there assuming that the task crossing the critical section was going to go as fast as possible, but the task is sleeping. So uh, this is uh, um, an argument that says uh, you're going to wait a lot, like a high latency. OK, there are lots of people that want, please. <laughs> It try, like, <laughs> try. So, um, two things. One is with the IRQ, this is basically invalid because normally if you need to grab a spin lock in an IRQ handler, you need to switch off IRQs when you're taking the same lock out of the IRQ handler. No, so, speak and slower, slower, Jorgen. Thank you. But if you can, I, I, so you said, I'm trying to, to grab an. an um, so, if, you, if there's a lock you're taking from both inside an IRQ handler and outside yeah. an IRQ yes. handler, the yes. same lock. Yes. You need to disable interrupts before you're taking the lock outside of the IRQ handler, because then, of course, you get the right. deadlock situation. Right. And the other thing is, if preemption was left enabled in spin locks, at least our preferred lock handling way, the cute spin lock handler would no longer work because it relies on the fact that there are different kind of uninterruptibilities basically and in all these, I think those are four different states, only one spin lock can be held at the same time. Otherwise the mechanism would be broken. So if you are in a normal spin lock, you have the first state, you have then I think it's the um, BH spin locks. It's the second state which can be uh, active. And then you have the IRQ disabled, and then you have the NMI lock. Uh, the locks are handled. Uh, uh, the an that, NMI okay, lock. the type of yeah, BH yeah, bottom so, half. Yeah. So you have basically four queues for right. spin lock handling. Yes. And okay. if you have two spin locks which can be taken in the same yeah. uh, section. Right. The, uh, the queues are broken, basically, and the fair lock handling mm. is no longer possible. So this is garbage, right? So this uh, is basically the, uh, the reason. OK. Oh, you explained me the reason. All right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there is a recording. Uh, I, I will study the, what you said. Uh, it will take me a while, but I will eventually get there. You still have something to say, Richard? Uh, I Please. still have something to say, yeah. yeah. Okay. So not coming from the kernel world, not knowing anything about this, but this is all not special to spin locks. It's true for any kind of lock. If you exactly. held a lock and exactly. then you reschedule and the, you want to take the same lock, then you have a, a deadlock. So maybe the kernel guarantees that this 
only can happen for spin-locks, but I don't know why. Be exactly. So now you explain that. This is, why, uh, this is also what I was thinking. Like, why do you sp do sp special cases spin-lock? But, but Jorgen has already explained the, the, the solution. But when I read that, I said, why do I, uh, do I special case the spin-lock? Why Murex would have... Well, well, the reason is that the spin lock is the only lock that can be taken from the interrupt context. All right. So Ooh. if you would take uh, a spin lock and go to sleep in a non-interrupt context, then you can easily starve interrupts because those are the only locks that can be taken. That part uh, I didn't. That part I didn't know. This I didn't know. I mean, this it's actually gets completely changed by preempt RT though, because you can go to sleep with with, with spin lock held with preempt RT. And the way this is achieved is that yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, okay. all the interrupts are running as a kernel thread, kernel threads actually. So IRQ, can schedule. I uh, threaded IRQ, yeah, yeah okay, yes. Uh, uh, but you say I can, I can sleep on a spin lock on the RT murex, you mean? Or a yeah, yeah, yeah preempt RT does change this because pr with preempt RT you can go to sleep while holding a spin lock. Yeah, b yes. Because you are not going to starve an interrupt because interrupt is running. Ah, that's right. right. That's the reason. The interrupt that you're not starving. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. That <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't get it this, you don't get it this cheap, Peter. Yes, I also get the prize. Didn't do any work, but I also get the prize. Right. Um, anyway, thank you. Okay, it was quicker than I expected, but I have uh, some extra material. So, so uh, I, I guess it, it wasn't completely answered. So why isn't that an issue for a mutex? So I, our mutex is always like per task. You cannot take a mutex from an IRQ. Is that correct? Is that's, that's yeah, but, but, but I, I mean, I, 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 so I take the mutex, I reschedule, and another task enters the kernel and wants to take the same mutex. Yeah. Okay, so, so it will eventually, so yes, it wants to take mutex, it will go to sleep as well, yeah? So okay. it will go to sleep and then eventually the other task gets so, scheduled so, so, again. And so, so, so basically mutex. all mutex taking points are also rescheduling points. Yes, 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 yes. But, yes, uh, yes, but yes. So that, that wasn't on any of the slides. Before. Well, so in kernel so I was only leaving the kernel. Sorry. So, yeah. Sorry, so, so in the mutex, it's Locked, this. There is might sleep, so that's a scheduling point in the preempt voluntary case. Uh, otherwise, if like the mutex is free, Maybe this. it's not a scheduling point. If the mutex is taken, it is a scheduling point because we will go to sleep. And it's going to sleep, the thing. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mention that, but go to sleep, boom, schedule. You, you, you're leaving the CPU. I don't need to ask you to leave, you're already out. So, uh, the, yeah. But this was in my mind, but thank you for pointing out that was not uh, explicitly said. Uh, so that's very valuable, thank you. I, uh, I forgot, yeah, this we passed, voluntary. Okay, voluntary is um, the middle ground uh, of those uh, three uh, non-voluntary uh, and full, uh, without considering preempt RT. Uh, it was uh, implemented later, so this is why I put it uh, last. Voluntary is uh, proposed in 2004, merged in 2005, um, edited and um, it, it, it is uh, a simpler in design, uh, ingenious idea, but simpler uh, in design than full preemption. Uh, this is a config option. This is a command line parameter. Um, Ingo Molnar and Ariane van de Ven um, had to debug some uh, latency uh, related bug report. Uh, oh. um, they uh, were looking for uh, giving more opportunity for context switches and realized that uh, there were this uh, uh, might sleep uh, function, which are essentially annotation. They, uh, as I have read on LWN, they are a debugging aid. Uh, if you uh, are, are uh, sleeping in a function that doesn't have might sleep, bug, something like this. I don't know, never. But this is the, they were uh, there do dormant uh, um, and uh, code annotation. And uh, uh, Ingo thought, if someone took uh, care of annotating all the places I can sleep, then how about I put a scheduling point there? It's safe. So they, um, uh, Ingo and Arian, um, uh, put um, a counter sched in, um, into uh, my sleep, and so you would check the Nidrescad flag, and uh, if necessary, you would leave the CPU. Uh, 
Yes, this is uh, what uh, uh, preempt voluntary is about. And um, do, yes. So maybe you should explain what Conrad's cat is because I don't think you mentioned it. Yeah, I don't think I know. I, I read the name. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would expect that uh, you check Nidra's cat and if uh, Nidra's cat is asserted, you call schedule. This is what I would uh, imagine it is. Uh, so conditional rescheduling. You don't necessarily call schedule, but there is this uh, needless um, uh, need uh, flag that is um, set. One thing I want to mention that um, I don't think is super obvious is uh, uh, we, we describe this mechanism uh, using uh, the, uh, uh, the flag needless cat, then we say you are a task, you are on your CPU. If in the meantime another task uh, of higher priority became runnable, uh, then uh, preemption will get you out of the CPU. But how um, you were running on the CPU, how could the scheduler make all those calculations and update uh, needless cat? The answer is that this happened in the tick, and so um, the periodic uh, timer interrupt, and so all this uh, mechanism depend on having a tick. So, the higher the tick frequency, the more accurate you are in your uh, updates of the needless cat flag. Uh, yes? Sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, another point is that in addition to having the Conrad's cat in white sleep, it also, generally developers need to also um, annotate loops that they might have introduced in the kernel. So for example, if you're doing some processing which might be timely, it's a good, it's a good practice to essentially put Conrich get because sooner or later you would get like a soft lockup uh, mm. warning. Ah, so okay. it's basically an uh, ever going battle to you know, find places where Conrich get actually needs to be added. So just it being in my sleep is like 90% of the time not sufficient. So you would add Condres cat just in case? I mean... So not just in case, but generally there would be a report saying, you know, there is a soft lockup in yeah. this loop, so what's going on? So you have to go understand what's going on, yeah. like if you're doing some batch processing or whatnot in the kernel. That's right. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Nikolai. Um, okay. The, uh, I forgot what's after this. Uh, this is uh, lock breaking because it's important, and then we have the... Uh, I believe that we are running a little bit late. Yes, so um, what was this? Ah, preempt RT. Okay, let's do preempt RT, I promised. Um, uh, preempt RT, um, determinism, not speed. So uh, it's not um, a patch that uh, uh, gives you low latency, it's a patch that gives you uh, predict. You want an upper bound on the worst case execution. And uh, so this is the, what uh, the, the, the project is about. Um, defining feature, I would say this RT mute XT, which um, when Irji said uh, um, in preempt RT, you acquire a, sli a, sli a, a, a spin lock and, and you can sleep. Um, I would uh, imagine that that spin lock that we were talking about is one of those that has been under the hood converted into an RT mutex real-time mutex, would you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I've, I've heard not, there are a few that are not, that are row spin lock. You need the, you need the, the row spin lock. So what I'm talking about, I'm, um, uh, in, the, in the quest for scheduling points, the preempt RT project said, I don't like that my, the preemption is disabled every time I take a spin lock. This is a problem because this spin lock could be long, and so how about we put, uh, uh, we allow the spin lock to be scheduling point. Um, and so um, this uh, is what RT mutex is, real-time mutex, is um, a synchronization uh, primitive that uh, um, replace spin locks into, in the uh, preempt RT patch. Uh, those spin lock where this operation is safe, compatible. Uh, it was my understanding is that 
some of the spin lock that were spin locked in the main line rem uh, remained spin lock and um, the majority of them have been uh, transformed into this uh, mutex which is which can sleep second oh priority inheritance uh, priority inheritance implemented directly into this mutex that uh, uh, prevent uh, priority inversion, there would be another uh, source of latency. Threaded IRQ, we, we, we touch on those. Um, essentially, the, uh, the top half uh, does not... You, you, you run the top half in different threads, so you can be in a different CPUs and you don't have to um, wait... Uh, you have to wait or not? It can be preempted. The thing is that you can preempt it. You have to wait it, but someone can uh, can can preempt it. Uh, so the the thread the threaded IQ is let's put the the the, the top half uh, on another thread of execution, another CPU, and and let it sleep if necessary. And then uh, preempt to ICU, which um, I guess it's needed. I mean, I have no familiarity with the preemptible RCU, but I'm pretty sure that uh, it is uh, a key ingredient of uh, preempt RT patch. So we got uh, the RT mutex, sleepable spin lock, priority inheritance, and threaded IRQ, and uh, preempt RCU. Uh, this is uh, what I would describe uh, preempt RT. There are, um, there are, um, there are, mo there, the, there are more, uh, uh, this is a, a small list. Uh, I've read, um, um, a report from 2019 of all the features that uh, uh, graduated from, that were born in Prime 30 and uh, reached mainline in the past 15 years. Uh, there are many of them, but for example, threaded IRQs, I understand that this is mainline now. Yes, no, yes, yes. Okay, I understand, yes, the audience confirms. Uh, this, uh, uh, yes. Also, also mainline. So we got this. We got this. And my understanding is this is the elusive uh, holy. Uh, um, but no, but it's not used. Like maybe is it is it possible to sleep on? What do you think? I don't know. Yeah. So, so I believe some of the RT mutex code is already upstream. It's just not enabled by default. But you can, in principle, like enable this. It's just that some bits which allow the integration, uh, like some bits still are not there. But like the RT mutex T as such is already upstream. Mm. I believe. But do you think there are uses uses of this? So I don't believe that. So you can enable it, but if you enable it, it actually doesn't quite work. Yeah, like, but ah, you have to enable it. Okay. So, so it's like partially enable. upstream. Yeah? Right. <laughs> mm. uh, mostly so that they don't have to rebase the patches all the time. So, so like the intrusive parts, I believe, are already upstream. But uh, but yeah, it's not like usable in a way in which in right. the shape and form in which it currently is upstream. Right. Was this the big celebration in 2019 in uh, Plumbers Lisbon where? I remember there was a config option that was merged, and everybody celebrated as if at the end of it. All right. <laughs> Just <laughs> Mel, you wanted. Yeah. Did, did it, it's already repeated. The, the RT mutex implementation is there mainline. You can't implement it because preempt uh, the, the preempt ball or preempt RT water um, K config option doesn't exist yet. But the code is there in principle, and yeah. it led to an argument recently on. Uh, fixes for RT mutex on whether it goes into stable or not, and it came to a conflict. And I said, "Well, it is in a mainline kernel, but and the stable maintainer says we can't enable it, so is it really stable maintain? Uh, is it really stable material and kind of within the circular for a while?" All right, thank you for the pointer. I will check this discussion out, please. Yeah, I just wanted to say that like problem with this conversion from spin locks to RT mutex is, is that usually. There are a lot of nested logs in many parts. Ah, nested logs, yes. And if you have one mutex that actually is also used in interrupt context that you couldn't convert it into the RT mutex because it couldn't sleep because you wouldn't yeah. be able to wait for it in interrupt. And if uh, there is a nested spin log uh, somewhere taken that actually isn't taken in IRQ path 
anywhere, then you eventually would be able to convert it into this RT mutex, but you cannot because it's nested somewhere under the spin log that Same. is that ah. could be converted. <laughs> and so you basically need to fix a lot of parts when these yeah. logs are nested, and that's why the RT mutex is already in mainline, but I guess that not all parts are I fixed see. now, so you couldn't actually use it at uh, the moment. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot of work and, yeah. Okay. And, and by, the, by the way, the traded IRQs are used even, not just in RT, but even in a normal situation. Yeah, that seems when useful. It's enabled and it usually works that way that if there are, I don't know, maybe the default is more than 10, Mm. IRQ requests pending, then they are handled like immediately, and if there are more than 10, then it ah, okay. basically gets offloaded even now to k Okay, okay. Yeah. makes sense. So Thanks. And that's some, it's actually quite magical because sometimes the system works very well, and when it reaches the point when it started out, out, out offload to, K thread that suddenly handling the IRQs is slower and then might accumula accumulate and it might actually cause suddenly some troubles with IRQs. Because once it switches to K thread, that it always use K thread. It cannot come, go back. Unless okay. it gets empty, then it can uh -uh. switch back. Ah, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, uh, Shung Si, please. Uh, I want your in, uh, I want your uh, comment. You, you, you were about you were queuing for the mic. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Just want to let you know that there are three minutes. So uh, there's right. yeah. Uh, so question. I see hard IRQ in the talk, but a lot of like network processing also occur in the soft IRQ. So I'm wondering if you happen to know like. What's the difference of soft IRQ and the pre-MRT part? Yeah, soft IRQ are easy. This is what I understand. Uh, the, the difficult part is the, 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 the hard IRQ, also known as top halves. Those are the ones that get in the way and they generate the long latency. The soft IRQ is the, the things that get processed later and uh, I don't think they block uh, critical stuff, I, I don't know, is that, does that make any sense? I see uh, people uh, nodding, so that means uh, that I was yeah, right. The, the soft IRQ is of no special protection except in very specific circumstances. Yeah, you got it, okay. Uh, I believe, yeah. Say so time is up, it's like one minute, uh, next speaker has to set up. So thank you very much for attending, it was very enjoyable for me, and um, <laughs> you were very generous, very generous.